This message is for anyone who feels like they have suffered loss and found themselves on their back. You will really be able to connect to this. Imagine me, roughly around 21, 22 years young, and I'm finishing up my school at Bucknell University. Now I am entering to what people would call the real world. As a management major, economics minor, I took the typical route like most Bucknellians take. They either go into investment banking or financing, etc. And I took that investment banking route. Why? Because I was chasing the money. It wasn't like I wanted a fancy title. I come from very simple means and I knew that I had to make this count. That if I'm going to be having a $160,000 education underneath my belt, then we got to make it worth my while and go for something that's going to break off that bread. And so I was hired by a prominent financial firm and in the South too, working with high net worth clients, managing their money as a stockbroker. What's interesting about this experience is I'm not even that good at math. I don't even really care about dealing with pe people's money like that. But I knew that in order to get that check, this is what I had to do because this was my get rich quick scheme. And I have been working for this prominent financial firm for probably about three or four months. They were simply paying me to get my certifications to begin so that I could invest people's money. And so I had to pass the Series 7, the Series 6. Uh, there was a commodities commodities exam. There was also an experience exam. I, I was just hitting the books and they were paying me for it. So life was good. But then uh, that was the easy part. The toughest part was actually getting people to invest their money with you. And so I would take some of the who's who in Pensacola, Florida out to wine and dine them simply to quote unquote ask for advice. That was my way in. But really what I was going to spring on them was, listen, I feel like I can help you grow your money. It was nothing more than helping the rich get richer. And it was a tough go. Here's why it was tough, because I'm a young minority male in the deep south trying to manage other people's money. And this is old money in Pensacola, Florida. So most of these guys and gals already had financial advisors that they, that they were working with. So time was not easy. I would be calling people, cold calling people. They didn't know me from a man on the moon and uh, they'd be hanging up on me too as soon as I get out that first sentence. So I wasn't bringing in the bank like I thought that I would. would. And one day, like any other day, I'm coming in uh, with my suit and tie all buttoned up tight and I'm wanting to look just like any other broker in the office, you know, I was chasing the gold embroidered cufflinks that I seen the prominent financial advisors wear and also the sports cars. I remember this one guy, but I'm, I'm not going to give you his name, but he had this sweet Nissan 370Z, no pun intended, but that was like my future. I seen that for myself. And so I'm, I'm, I'm even though times is hard, I'm thinking I'm going to get there eventually. But once I arrive on this particular day, the branch manager calls me into the office. No warning. He sits me down and he says, Nissan, today will be your last day. You're fired. And bam, just like that, I'm seeing the world that I was trying to build crumble. And this was a unique firing. Here's the reason why. I had to leave the premise immediately. The assistant who I was working with. Uh, escorted me out the back door. I couldn't take any of my key contacts with me. Talk about a situation that blindsided me. This was the one. And here I am thinking that this was the job, the opportunity of a lifetime that was not only going to set me free financially, but the people around me free. I felt like I had my family counting on me. And now I'm being escorted out the back door? This is crazy. I'm, I'm scratching my head trying to think about what do I do next. But here's the ironic part about the whole ordeal. Have you ever felt good being fired? Uh, it was crazy, but I wasn't mad. In fact, I was quite happy and relieved because I knew that I was pursuing something that was unfit for me. That this was a, a 
a life that I was chasing that was by the book. You go, you get your fancy degree, and you work in management, or you work in finances, or you work in investment banking, and you make that paper. Not, not to mention, I was miserable trying to do this. It wasn't the happiest of days. Uh, I was falling flat on my face because I was doing something I was not called to do. And so there's a lot of people out there who they have a gift, they have a purpose, but because they're trying to do things by the book and make things look sweet on paper, they're miserable. And I was doing my happy dance when they fired me. Yes, it was not cool to be fired like that. Sure, nobody wants to be escorted out the side door. Talk about being embarrassed. There was people in the bullpen who who seen this episode happen to me. And probably more than being embarrassed for me, they were also scared for themselves. It just wasn't the ideal environment that I wanted to be in. But here's what happened. Once I failed that experience, yes, I call it failure. And, and failure, here's the definition I would give to it. It was a growth opportunity for me. It was a learning experience for me because I went from white collar looking at the analytical stock trends of how a stock would what's called head and shoulders, go up and then go down. I was watching that over the computer screen to once they fired me, I had no shame in the game. I was just trying to make it. I asked my uncle, listen, uncle, he built fences in the hot Alabama heat. And I said, can I work for you? I'll do anything you ask me to do. I just want to keep food in my mouth. I have no other options. And I went from analyzing stocks and having my nice suits and one day thinking I'd be driving the sports car and also have the gold cufflinks to all of a sudden I'm slamming a post hole digger in the ground digging holes so that my uncle could build fences. I'm in the heat, y'all. I went from white collar to blue collar, bam, just like that. And here's the lesson and what that taught me is that sometimes you got to dig deep, pun intended. I was digging holes, but sometimes you got to dig deep. And like mama would tell me, son, you got to do what you got to do in order for you to do what you want to do. Let me give that to you again. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do. And so even if life isn't grand for you, roll up your sleeves, dig deep and do what you got to do. That hustle, that grind, that experience that you're going through where you feel like you're at rock bottom. Trust me, there's a lesson at the bottom in order to get to the top. Learn that lesson, and then you'll appreciate the top once you get there. And here I am in the heat, digging holes, building fences, and I was learning in that experience that life is unpredictable. And can I still carry the same type of belief system that I'm going to make it even though it doesn't look like I am? I didn't look the part. Can you imagine a $160,000 scholarship and I'm out there building fences? This wasn't the plan that I had for myself. But what I learned from that experience is the grind, the hustle. I learned how to have grit and heart. And I learned how to overcome difficult situations when it doesn't seem like it's working out. When you're trying to, to, to figure it out, things are still working out on your behalf. And so that's my lesson to anybody who is falling flat on their back, who's, who's trying to come up. I love the words of Les Brown. Sometimes you got to fall on your back uh, so that you can look up. And if you can look up, you can get up. You have a supernatural gifting in you to accelerate and excel. Yeah.